time. Is it penguin time? What's the time? We are going up. And you know what? There's only one way for us to get up there. That's pretty much how close it is to view the penguins. It's pretty amazing. What's the time? Is it penguin time? What's the time? Quarter to seven, babe. So it's quarter to seven. We've just had word that the penguins are still, the little penguins are still coming out right in front of where we're staying. So we've got our stools, we've put our beanies on and our headlamps because it's okay to have red light, but definitely not white light. We need to be quiet. We just stood really still. They actually walked up the steps. Um, oh my goodness. There's actually some in front of me. Oh, I can't believe it. I just gotta be really quiet. I've just sat back down. And there's two. I've got my gloves on. There's two just sitting here. If you want to see the world's smallest penguins, come to Stanley in Tasmania. They are absolutely delightful. We are staying at the Big Four Park. And as I said, literally 50, not even 50 meters, we first spotted them on the beach and on the rocks. And they've actually crossed over and now they're coming into the park. It's absolutely mind blowing. The squealing and the screeching. Well, I don't know if I have to explain that, but it is breeding season. <sighs> you just sit and listen and watch and take it all in. It's just definitely been an amazing experience. So absolutely highly recommend this. I know that the footage wasn't the best, um, but yeah, you have to respect that. You can only use red light around the penguins. Um, but yeah, let's just say, just sit and enjoy them. They also burrow around the cabins. These ones that you can hear now. <laughs> They're literally in the garden next to the cabin. Oh gosh. I'm going to go back to the Yeti van. I'm going to call it a night. And I'm going to say that that was the best experience. Absolutely. Highly recommend that for sure. Woohoo! We have arrived in Stanley at the Nut. Are you nuts or what? Maybe. So you ask, why is the Nut called the Nut? Depends on who you talk to. Some people say it comes from the indigenous word. I can't remember what it has, but it has the word nut in it. And others say it's from the breakwater that was built in 1853. During explosives, they reckon it was a hard nut to crack. So that's where they reckon the nut word comes from. So with saying all that, you know what? Mr. B. Yep. Are we gonna crack this nut today? Yeah, on chairlift, of course. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get ready. We are going up, and you know what? There's only one way for us to get up there. If there's more than 40 kilometer winds. It is shut. Yes, I can understand why it would be shut. So, other than that, keep your eye out, check your weather. But guess what? It's open, and we're going up. So 
we're nearly at the top of the chairlift ride. So 152 meters. Yep. That was an easy walk, I've got to say. contrast on this side of the nut to the first side which we began our loop so you can go either way we decided to go up first and see what it was going to be like on that side it was really quite dry all the grasses were like fully windblown and brown what direction are we southwest side southwest there you go so we're on the south southwestern side and look how green it is there's like green it's sort of yeah real grassy and what I thought were the nice little flowers there's the the nice little white weeds but they still look really really pretty um so far I'm gonna rate it as probably an easy to would you say moderate walk there's only been a couple of <laughs> okay. a couple of sections that have had stairs but they're pretty easy to go down and the rest of it's pretty flat it does say well two kilometers maybe allow 45 minutes if you want to do it really quick we've got a timer on at our pace and we are stopping so when we're finished we'll let you know how long it took us to do it we've made it to the top <sighs> Catlow's beach down here When you hop off the chairlift we chose to go left i'm going to say that that way was definitely the easier way than going right because if you go right you're going to have to go up stairs if you go left it's quite flat and then you're just coming down the incline so we did the whole loop two kilometers we did stop and have some snacks and just enjoy the view and it took us approximately an hour yeah it was really good highly recommend it that's for sure um Still got the puffer on it does get a little bit windy as well today i'm rocking the hiking boots but that was just for the fact of keeping my feet warm so i'm going to say you can do it in um fall low in your crocs if you want so yeah make sure you come and see the nut but we've got to do one thing we're going to get all the way back down from the nut so we're going to travel at 152 meters down recommendation get on the chairlift to see the nut isn't that right mr b yep shave your knees <laughs> well worth it they do 
actually have a full cafe here at the top of the nut and it's open from 12 till 2.30. They do have some pretty yummy Tasmanian delicacies. They even have the good old scallop pie. So if you want a bite to eat, check out this beauty. We are going to head downtown and see what we can find. And you know what? I'm driving big Brucey today. How cool is that? Woo! So look out. lunch at the Stanley Hotel. We highly did. highly recommend. I had the calamari which oh my gosh that was amazing and I'm not just saying that calamari is one of my favorites so I feel like I have it a lot of places that we go to and that was next level. And I had the good old chicken parmy. <laughs> you did? Chicken was actually pretty good. It was like tender hot. The topping was good. The sides were a little bit uh, crisper than usual. They were nice and crunchy. Yeah. But yeah, I highly recommend this place. And it was busy once we got in there as well. So um, yeah, we thoroughly enjoyed. We're going to have just a quick wander through town. I don't think much is actually open, but we're just going to have a quick wander around and see where we end up. I would say the prices were reasonable. Yeah, they were. Oh, and I had a little bit of Tasmanian champagne. It was a little bit bougie. That's why she's going to be a loopy. No, I'm not, but that was really nice. Um, I feel like the menus here, everything was local. So yeah, so good, support locals. Come to Stanley Hotel for your lunch or your dinner. We chose to do lunch. Um, <laughs> when Dave said to me, do I wanna do lunch or dinner? I'm thinking, oh, the cold, let's do lunch. I think it'll be easier than coming out tonight. Yep. And we've got things to see tonight. We're gonna see if the, um, the little penguins come out again. Uh, we seen them last night. Yeah, I know, but I want to see if they come out again. <laughs> you know what else they have in Stanley? They have the big lobster. How cool is that? So it's a seafood restaurant. It is open for lunch and dinner, and they also do um, local seafood sales as well. So if you want to get your fresh seafood that literally comes off the trawlers from just around the corner, you can actually buy from there as well. So yeah. Get all your fresh seafood from Stanley. Uh, staying at the Big Four in Stanley, which is amazing. It is beachfront. We are at site number 10, and I just wanted to show you exactly how close it was for the little penguins, because it's really hard with the footage at night um, because there is no flash photography allowed. So basically from out here, the little penguins come across at about eight o'clock. They do actually come up the rocks. They come, there's a couple of um, stairs, which is just up that way. And then also behind me, pretty much from where I am now, out here, it it's worked out well because it's low tide at approximately 7.30, 8 o'clock and you just sit. You sit and you be quiet. We just put the little stools out and you wait and they literally march up. They march right in front of you. Penguins are one of the most social creatures. So once they've come back in, they literally like have this little party with each other and then they wait and then they burrow. And from last night sounds, it is breeding season. So it did get full on. So we are basically here and over here is Big Brucey and the Yeti van. So that's pretty much how close it is to view the penguins. It's pretty amazing. I'm not going to give a full rundown of the park as I do in some of our episodes. All I'm going to say is 
I'm going to give it probably around about 8 out of 10 for our stay in Stanley. The camp kitchen's great, the amenities are great. They are putting new amenities in, so there's going to be two blocks and the second block is going to be a lot closer to where we've camped. Price-wise, amazing. At the moment, they've had a deal. If you pay for two nights, you get the extra night free. So take advantage of that. And once again, as I've said before, if you've got your parks memberships like Big Four and G'day Mate, then honestly, it's cheap. How much did we spend over our time here? It worked out at $28 a night. So I've got to say that is pretty cheap for traveling just for a weekender or full time on the road to have all the facilities. So come and see Stanley in Tasmania. Absolutely beautiful. So that wraps up our time here at Stanley. I will recommend, do come, check it out. Stay at the caravan park and watch the penguins where you don't have to pay. Absolutely. Were we nuts coming here, really? I don't think we were. No. No. You can call us nuts anyway, but I reckon check out Stanley, definitely. It's a quaint, a quaint little town. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's for everyone. No. Don't come here if you're looking for a bustling um, big town or a place to go out at night. A lot of the shops close very early um, due to the fact that there is no one around at the moment. So. And the thing is, we are travelling on the off-peak. Yep, we are travelling off-peak. But we love it because there's not many people. Yeah. And do check out deals at, at caravan parks. I mean, we like the free camp like everyone else. Yeah. But at the moment during off-peak, some of the parks have buy two, stay, stay for three. Sorry, I can't talk at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so all you're doing is you're bringing a little bit of um, economy into some of these small towns that only get it during peak t season period. That's so it. if you come here, see it when not everyone else is here and you don't have to line up and um, yeah, come Stanley, go on the chairlift, go for a walk around, check it out. Absolutely. So we are going to end the episode. I know you get a missus, but you know what? Make sure if you are loving our episodes or you want to follow us as we go around Australia and a huge thank you to everybody that subscribes, watches and watches our madness. Yep. Thank you because it does mean a lot. But remember, hit the notification bell because that tells you when we've launched another episode. Till next episode. Have fun, go on adventures, be safe. And we'll see you then. Bye.